Hello guys, uh, it's Chris and today we're gonna have a look on how to generate percussion lines, glitches and musical elements into a minimalistic track using a drum rack and an arpeggiator. So as a starting point, we have this basic loop. The sounds that I'm gonna use today are coming mostly from the minimal one shot sample pack apart from this zap loop that I'm using as a background percussion and texture that is coming from the experimental electro sample pack. And I uploaded two drum racks with one with percussions and another one with synths from the minimalistic one shot sample pack. And now I'm going to use the arpeggiator in order to generate firstly a percussion line with the percussion drum rack. So what I'm going to do is I create a new MIDI instance. I'm going to select the lowest note, increase a bit the length of the loop and have, let's say, this kind of pattern where one node is starting on beat and another one is starting off beat. I'm going to reduce slightly the length of the note so it doesn't, uh, it's not received uh, from Ableton as one steady note. And then I'm going to use the arpeggiator in order to jump from one pad of the drum rack to the other. How can we do this? We can do this with the steps of the arpeggiator and also using the distance. The steps is how many times it's going to jump up or down or however you select the style of the arpeggiator. And the distance is how many semitones. So it will be in this case 12 semitones correspond to 12 pads. So from this sound is going to jump to this one. If we play with the distances, the steps and the style, we can trigger random percussion from the drum rack and have interesting results in my opinion. What I can do, let's hear first of all how it's sounding like this. Pretty repetitive, right? In as is just two steps. What I can do is I can increase the two steps, use some LFOs to modulate the parameters of the arpeggiator. So let's modulate the distance I can modulate 50 to 80 let's say so it's jumping from 1 semitone to 14 I reduce a bit the LFO rate obviously to have a bit more smooth modulation and I'm gonna select the second LFO to use the style of the arpeggiator I'm going to reduce the frequency modulation of this one too. And I'm going to reduce also the maximum value because I think the less um, style in the arpeggiator is core than I don't want to have different elements sounding at the same time. So let's hear how it's sounding now. Not bad. Not bad. What I can do is I can create a group duplicate the arpeggiator and use the same LFOs to modulate the same exact things. So the distance with this and the style with the style of the second one. And I can slightly change the values of the second arpeggiator, which can be the rate, for example. What I can do is I have to choose an option between chain and velocity to jump between one arpeggiator and the other. And this time I'm going to select the velocity that if you use with these exact values, it's going to generate random velocity information. So if I press the right click and distribute ranges equally, now every time a note is triggered, I'm gonna have a random velocity value that is gonna select either the arpeggiator with one eighth rate or another arpeggiator with one sixteenth rate. So if I press play, Let's see how all this is sounding in a context. So 
would like to have more 16 nodes happening. So what I can do is just increase the chance this way to have the 116 arpeggiator play. And another modulation that I can apply is a note length. So if I use a note length here, what I can do is create a new audio channel and simply record the the percussions generated from here. Let's go. So I've pushed this bar a bit more to the right because I felt that actually if there is a bit of silence within percussion, it would be nice. So that's what I've done. I've created another possibility to have actually no notes being triggered and no arpeggiator being triggered. So we have our percussion line here that we can see. Also the peaks are quite controlled. I think I've used the limiter. So. One interesting thing to do with this is you can create a polyrhythmic length of the percussions to have um, the percussion not resulting too much repetitive. And I think we're going to do the same with the synth notes. So just use an arpeggiator and a note length. Um, create a group with two different kind of arpeggio rates and I'm going to select the velocity again. One important thing to keep in mind is that uh, generating random velocity values also you're going to affect the volume to velocity parameter that is usually um, used by default by the simpler so what I can suggest is just bring this down to zero so the velocity value won't affect the volume and you're going to copy the value to the other drum pads of the drum rack too. So in this way, uh, I can use other two LFOs to modulate the same parameters. Why not? So one is going to the style. You see the last one is core trigger, so we don't want different sounds playing together. So we're gonna bring this to 80. So we played safe. And then we're gonna use this to modulate the distance. It was from 50, so it's from 0 to 82 here, I guess. Let's see how is it responding. Yeah, it's all right. We're going to use 4 here and 4 here as well. And let's assign the same ones to the first one too. So we're going to have 0 to 80 and 50 to 80 to this other one too, this other distance too. And I'm going to copy exactly this uh, part that I've used here. Why not? Let's see how it's sounding for now. Okay, as note, I have a very low value where no samples are playing, so I have to bring it here. Okay. I think if we mute the root node, we can have a bit more interesting results. What I can do is to record actually the MIDI itself and play with the chances of the uh, as the new func as the Ableton Eleven allows me to play with that the new MIDI functions of it. So. Uh, Let's do it. So this is surely very busy. So let me see how this MIDI roll is looking like. Yeah, quite busy. So what I can do. I was going to select all 
and bring this chance actually to 10% or even less, 11%, okay. Oh, I missed two notes, which I'm not sure which one they are. One is this one. And this is another one. So if I bring this to such a low percentage, um, not every note is going to be triggered, right? So only the 10% of this all note section is going to be triggered. And also here we're using a polyrhythm. This is not an eighth length note, but a tenth one, which can be interesting as well. Obviously I have to copy the drum rack into the new MIDI channel and unarm the MIDI function. Put this away. And then let's see how this all is sounding. can I make this more interesting? So I'm gonna increase a bit the value of some because I feel it's a bit too low. So this is 20%. And I can start using some effects on this kind of notes, which can be a physical nice. But also I want some kind of grain delays happening, to be honest. I can use the doubler, which is as kind of a nice effect. And if I use the portal, which is the one that comes to mind, if I use the portal, I can generate some nice modulations for sure. Okay. I think now they have too much of a percentage, so I'm gonna bring this down again. I use a bit of EQ because I think there's a, a lot of lows going on here. So I'm going to bring this up a bit. the textures and what we have created what I can do is add a, a pad and a baseline uh, from the other sample packs that I have created so this is the old school tech house uh, I would go with this with the uh, mini modular sequences these are modular sine waves uh, which are quite atonal to be honest so <laughs> They do an amazing job as well. So let's find something. Uh, this could work, I think. Then I'm going to look for a synth and a pad. And I think we're kind of good, to be honest. And then we can start be actually a track around this. Uh, these are just the one shot. Let's see if I have any cool pad. I like the difference of it. I can loop just a section and play with it. Then let's look for a synth where I can get this from. Let's see if here I have. <laughs> yeah, I do like this.
I think we can apply a bit of sidechain to some of these elements, the bass line, the pads, and the synth, and then we can even have a track with this. So, I guess that's it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I hope to see you soon into the next one. Cheers, guys. Thank you.